Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Inbound Studio. Sally, thank you so much for being here with thank us. You. Thank you for having me. Um, before you head up to the spotlight stage, we wanted to sit down and chat a little bit. And I would love to just start off with, can you just give like the elevator pitch of what Elevest is and why it's so important yeah. that you started it? Um, oh, I haven't given the elevator pitch in a <laughs> while. Um, Elevest is an investing platform for women. Um, I see quite a few women in the room, so maybe you won't say, women don't need their own investing platform, which is what uh, I heard a lot of when I was giving the elevator pitch. Um, and in fact, I thought that for a period of time. Women, we don't need our own thing. What is some remedial financial education for dumbed down for us ladies? Uh, but the research says that women invest less, in fact, much less than men do, not even accounting for the gender pay gap, and that this um, gender investing gap cost us hundreds of thousands, for some women, millions of dollars over the course of our lives. Uh, when I looked at businesses that I used to run, like Merrill Lynch and Smith Barney, what we found when I dug through the old numbers is that in the year after their husband's death, women leave their joint financial advisor at a rate of 80 to 90 percent. And so there's a deep well of unhappiness, we could call it, but certainly a mismatch between what the investing industry, both the more traditional Merrill's have been providing, as well as some of the newer robo-advisors. And so we set out to say, what if we throw away everything we think we know about mm -hmm. women and investing, like we don't like to invest, or we're a niche market, or we're not good at math, and re-question those assumptions and build something 100% around what we're looking for. I think something else that I've um, seen you talk about and, and you uh, write about um, is that uh, women's career, uh, salaries tend to yeah. peak earlier in their career and statistically women live longer than men. And so therefore by like straight numbers, your financial uh, investment strategy should just be different than like the average exactly financial right. investment strategy. exactly right. So much as, as in the medical industry where all the research is done on male heart attacks, and in the auto safety industry where all the research is done so that they make the dummies you know, the size of men. So in fact, if you are investing on average, if you have a retirement plan that's average, given the fact that we tend to earn less, unfortunately, our salaries peak sooner, and that 80% of us die single, we live six to eight years longer than men, if we assume average, then you will not have enough money in your retirement. Right, and so this sort of gender neutral approach mm -hmm. to investing, as in so many things that are supposedly gender neutral, actually made for men. By the way, probably no big surprise, in an industry in which 90% of traders are men, 86% right. of financial advisors are men, 90% of mutual fund managers are men, 98% of money in the industry is managed by men. Sir, I love men, I do. <laughs> I have been married to a couple of men myself personally. <laughs> I think they're amazing creatures, but it's no wonder that an industry that's so overwhelmingly male, despite the research that tells you women are better investors, has done a better job for men. It's my dad. Hey, dad. <laughs> I think she's doing great, don't you? There we go. Um, I think another piece is, and you mentioned this a little bit, is just like financial literacy and understanding and maybe it's a gender thing, maybe it's not a gender thing, but what is Elevest doing to help, yes, create the platform for women to better invest their money, but also understand what they're doing? Yeah, so we're, we're doing a lot of it, but I do want to back up because that is one of the, you know, some of the chaff that's been thrown up about why women don't invest. Well, women need more financial education. We do. So do men. Right? And somehow it's this, well, until we get the financial education, we can't invest. I think some of it is based on the fact that every one of us got A's in high school. I mean, I know you did. <laughs> right? And so we have that sense of, I need to really know everything before I invest. That's actually the gender difference. It's, it's not the amount of financial education. It's the fact that we've been socialized, as my friend Reshma Sajani says, girls are taught to be perfect, boys are taught to be brave. Right? We've been taught to get A's. And so it's not that we understand less, it's that when we understand not as much as we, we think we should, then we tend to hold back mm -hmm. as well. So to answer your question, um, we are not doing financial education in the old, boring, you know, 
I bought the book. I promised myself I'm going to read the book. But you know what's more interesting than old-fashioned financial education? Everything. <laughs> like doing the laundry is more interesting than old-fashioned financial education. So what we're doing is taking a very modern approach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ask Sally on Instagram, Money in 60 Seconds on LinkedIn, you know, short burst of information that you can use where you take it and it's fun, it's approachable, it doesn't feel like hard, boring work. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other things that stands out to me about your platform is that the interface itself is very approachable and easy to make your way through. It's sort of like a TurboTax or something like that where it, yeah. it carries you along. And I think when I log into even like Fidelity, I'm like, oh God, please don't let me hit the wrong button. Like what's going on here? I think I understand what I'm looking at. So what kind of work like thinking went into designing oh. the, the, the route that people are going to take, Our, that user experience. I mean, years of it, actually. So we've, we've only at Elevest been launched for the past two and a half years, but there was two and a half years before that of intensive work. And it was intensive work both understanding what she is looking for, which, by the way, she can't articulate. And so user testing, you know, having people come in, no focus groups. So, I mean, going at this issue in so many ways because, you know, I often get the question, well, you know, how, how come the banks haven't done this? Why haven't the big firms done this? Everybody tried. Everybody tried and everybody spent tens of millions of dollars behind it. But what they did is they really looked at it as, as a marketing problem. Mm -hmm. How do we get women to change their behavior as opposed to an industry problem or a product problem? And so we spent a lot of time working on the underlying product. What is it that we're looking for? With about a zillion tiny little findings that together added up to something really meaningful. And then spent a tremendous amount of time on the design for what can help you get through, not with the least amount of friction, but with the right amount of friction. What information, what is the minimum amount of information we need from you? What's the amount of information you need from us? What makes it a mm -hmm. fun experience? Mm -hmm. And to your point, we tried much more to be a Tory Burch of financial services mm -hmm. you know, than a Merrill Lynch 2.0. Um, and, uh, and are constantly, constantly, constantly refining it. I was yep. on the shuttle on the way up this morning looking at you know, some new user tests that we did literally yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon where we're now into the individual tweaks. But a lot of design thinking, a lot of design forward. But don't let that fool you. The underlying finance is sophisticated, and it mm -hmm. has to be. It took me a year to find our chief investment officer, because I wanted to find someone who, like Sylvia Kwan, has got a PhD in engineering economic systems from Stanford and a computer science and applied math degree from Brown. Uh, and they're not, a, and who could think <laughs> creatively and there ain't a lot of those people around, and she also happens to be a woman. Was that important to you to hire yeah. a woman? Well, the research. So I'm a, I'm a research gal. I just let the re, I, you know my opinion is wonderful, but is not going to inform this business. Mm -hmm. I'm a research gal, and the research tells me that women are better ma money managers than men. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> Love it. There you have it. But but we also aren't caught up. You know somehow the industry seems to be caught up with their websites, at least your traditional industry, and this is how smart we are. Right, let me give you another article and another yeah. article and another article. And rather than it being about us and how smart we are, what we did is we took the entire lens and turned it back to her. So it's about her, not about us, which is a fundamentally different mind shift. When you were, I mean, leading a corporation like Bank of America and starting a startup yep. are two like entirely different leadership experiences, yes. I would imagine. Um, a, when you were at Bank of America or you know in your past life previous to Elevest, did you was startup was doing a startup on your roadmap? Was God, that something no. you? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, 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 no. I was the big company gal, and before Bank of America was at City, mm -hmm. um, and so I've had a series of big, complex managerial challenges. And so, but, you know, the part that you're too kind to share is I also, you know, hold a world record, which is I'm the only woman who's been fired on the front page of the Wall Street Journal twice. 
And so, you know, there were days when I thought, you know, this, this big complex company maybe isn't a perfect fit uh, for me. And so after my second uh, firing, um, you know, I sat back and thought, all right, what are the skill sets I have? What do I love doing? And then very importantly, what's important to me? And that wasn't a, you know, afternoon exercise or a weekend exercise. That actually took me the better part of a year. And do I, and I had opportunities to go back to big companies. And I would sit there and think I have the ability that not a lot of people have to manage big, complex, multi, you know, mm -hmm. global, multivariate businesses. Would I be okay giving that up? And for most people, the answer is absolutely not. Would I be okay writing the content at LFS? Yep. Right, and building the earnings models and going and beating with, you know, and asking for venture capital money and doing it from a position not of strength, but of, you know, like, please, I need some money. Um, would I be okay with that? What matters to me? And what came to me over a period of time is that what, none of that stuff mattered. None of it mattered. Giving up the warm chocolate chip cookies that they used to bring to my office at 3 o'clock in the afternoon sort of mattered, to be honest with you. But what really mattered was mission and affecting positive change. And if that doesn't matter to you, that's okay. But that really mattered to me. And as I began to, you know, people said to me, you start this investing platform for women. I'm like, that's dumb, that's dumb, that's dumb. And I had a morning when I had this recognition about how much money it cost us as women. And it's not just money. We all know that, because money's power. And every one of us knows the Me Too movement would not have to exist if women had as much money as men did. Every one of us knows there's not a woman on the planet, or a man, who would sit in that room with Charlie Rose with his half-open bathrobe if we had as much money as he did. Right? You'd be like, you got to be kidding me, Charlie. And you would have left. And so when I realized we had this thing about money that nobody was talking about, and when I Googled it, nothing was there, and that it cost us that much money, and then I said, well, that's unbelievable. Yep. And the industry isn't going to solve it. Who can solve this problem? <laughs> like, who has got the finance experience, which you have to have? Who can pull together a world-class tech team? Who can raise? the tens of millions at least of venture capital dollars that are needed. Who, who's got the patience, the analytical patience to actually build a product? And I, you know, at the end of it, it came down to maybe three, five people, and I knew them and the other four weren't going to do them, do it. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at this and said, look, if not me, I don't think anybody's gonna do it. And I honestly, having had the great privilege that I've had to work in these businesses and have the opportunities that I just was born into, and I don't do it, then shame on me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely shame on me. So it wasn't this, I've got to be an entrepreneur because that's the cool thing to do. It really was, I just owe this back to the world given the, the advantages I've had. I mean, obviously we have a room full of many women and my dad. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, and, and you, sir. <laughs> hopefully the, the spotlight room that you're about to head up to does have a few more men in it as well. When you leave us here today at Inbound, what are you hoping that women and men take away from the work that you're Look, doing? If they, you know, I know we always want to bring the guys along. I know we do. And I'm, as mentioned, married to a man right now. I have a son. I'm just texting my dad. I'm texting my brother. I really do love men. We just can't wait for them. We've been waiting. We've been waiting so long, right? I mean, think about all, think about the, so think about my industry. Think about all the research. Yeah. Research piece after research piece after research piece, the diverse leadership teams, and by that I'm talking specifically gender diverse, but diverse in every way. Leadership teams don't just drive better performance, drives dramatically better performance, right? Drives higher returns on equity by a lot, lower risk, greater innovation, greater client engagement, greater employee engagement, all that stuff, right? What's one industry that would benefit from more diversity? Wall Street. 
Wall Street, an industry that is the lifeblood of our economy. The crisis brought the global economy to its knees. That industry would seem to me could benefit from some of those things I talked about. Well, Wall Street, which went into the downturn white, male, and middle-aged, came out whiter, maler, and middle-aged. And my being fired, I promise you, wasn't because of bad business results. It was during the course of the crisis, standing outside of that crowd and being a different voice. And so Wall Street, which is in all of our interest, should be more diverse, has gone backwards. Corporate America overall has gone sideways, despite the research, compelling research. And so they're not bad folks, right? It's just, it's just this overwhelming drive to be with people like ourselves, uh -huh. to go to a zone of comfort. And so no one is going to take this more seriously than us. Gloria Steinem has said, no group has ever willingly given up power. And so guys, if we wait for them, we're gonna be dead, <laughs> right? I mean, so right now, yeah. right now the gender pay gap for women across all ethnicities in this country is 200 years away from closing. That's like Alexander Hamilton saying, we need to close the gender pay gap and it closing today, right? That's how long it is. So this ain't gonna happen. So the guys yep. aren't showing up for this. They never will. I'm not gonna convince them. All I wanna do is convince all of you to take financial control. I'm sure the women in this room have. But for our friends, for our daughters, maybe for some of you who haven't, to actually bust through the societal messages we've all gotten that essentially money is for guys, investing is for guys, right? We're all about budgeting and saving and being careful. And Carrie Bradshaw bought so many shoes she couldn't afford her apartment. <laughs> and, you know, it really is money and investing mm -hmm. are the one place where it's still considered ladylike to be bad with money. Right? And can we break through this final taboo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't so long ago being athletic was viewed as unladylike. Today, having a lot of money, bargaining for money, having money important, yep. talking about money is taboo. We need to break through the fact that we women would talk, prefer to talk about literally anything than money, including our own death, and certainly yeah. including sex, right? And do our daughters and younger sisters the favor of making it ladylike investing, asking for the raise so that we can even out the power structure in this country. Well, thank you personally for doing the work that you're doing and leading us all in that charge. Um, it's incredible and I think that the platform that you've created is something that we all need and um, I'm so excited to hear what else you have to share with us, but thank you for stopping by the studio you. before your Sorry. way up to that thank stage. You. Thank, thank you, Sally. Thank you.